What examples do you see within pharma and healthcare right now that represent the best examples of innovation and perhaps the best use of the online space and social media? Uh, one could say that uh, pretty much every program or the majority of programs going on out there right now are innovative to the extent that we are in a pioneering and an experimental stage um, where you know what we don't know means that everything we do is teaching us something and one could say that because we're learning so much all the time that um, it's, there's constant innovation going on. I have to say though that in the last 12 months um, a campaign that's been most impressive to me has been the AZ Helps um, program that AstraZeneca has been doing on Twitter. So, you know, one of the things that uh, there's been a lot of uh, fretting about in the industry is the idea that because we don't have regulatory guidance, we as an industry don't quite know what to do in terms of how we can dialogue with customers. Well, the nature of the AZ Helps program is that what AstraZeneca does is they monitor uh, mentions of their products or their company within Twitter, and whenever they pick up um, comments related to their products or their company, they then will post um, a tweet that, though it can't dialogue with the customer right there online, it gives the customer instruction about a 1-800 number or an alternative website that they can go to in order to get the information that they need to get in response to the question that they have. I think that that's an excellent example of not being hindered by what we don't have in the way of guidance, but of finding innovative ways to continue um, to drive and meeting the needs of customers um, and using the technology to do so. It's one of those things that when I look at it, I think, man, how come I didn't think about that? So kudos to AstraZeneca, and I certainly think that that indeed is the most innovative program, um, and, I'm, and I might say simply elegant program that I've seen in um, a really long time within social media. And what about from a Novo Nordisk perspective? Are there particular programs online that you're most proud of, that you think have been the most successful? So, when you ask about the programs and social media that Novo Nordisk has done that I'm most proud of, I have to call out um, two in particular. One that is um, actually no longer on the internet, but I'm just as proud of it, and another um, which is a program that we supported um, by way of an unrestricted educational grant. Um, that first one is the Voices of Diabetes blog site. Um, which used to be a part of our Changing Life with Diabetes program, um, which is which th that site is now on hiatus. But the reason I'm proud of it is that, as one of the first one of our forays into social media, um, we took a decidedly um, corporate social responsibility approach here, and decided that um, there was a benefit to our just setting up a, partici a participation space that would allow people with diabetes to share stories with one another about how they're productively coping with their diabetes. Um, we didn't engage with customers in those discussions, but we thought that it was important to give them a space uh, where they could engage with one another. And so I'm really, really proud of that. And we saw that as a successful program to the extent that it was um, our first foray into social media. It allowed us to begin to see how it works, how our customers interact with one another, as well as to begin to work through the very necessary um, risk assessments that any company has to do with their medical, legal, um, and regulatory departments and understanding how they can responsibly use social media. And then the, the second project, which is the Juvenation Type 1 Diabetes um, social community, which was a partnership um, that, again, we provided an unrestricted educational grant for, where um, the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation and um, Discovery Health, um, they were actually the, the entities that built the community. And last I heard, I think that um, Juvenation is certainly one of, if not the largest, 
type 1 diabetes community on the internet right now. And again, that was a, a, a case where we saw that there was a lack of spaces where people with type 1 diabetes in particular could get together to talk about the challenges of um, managing their type 1 diabetes. And so we wanted, again, to provide a participation space um, where these um, customers of ours could um, congregate and get the support that they needed from one another. So again, those are two programs that I'm particularly proud of among a number of programs that we've executed over the last few years. Now everyone seems to be eagerly awaiting this guidance from the FDA on social media use within pharma. So where do you think the regulators are going to end up on this? I have to say, although I hope that I'm wrong, that I don't think in the short term we're going to be getting um, any definitive guidance from FDA on how we should be approaching social media as an industry. Um, I have to tell you that I don't spend a, a lot of time fretting about that um, as a possibility. I think when I look around that I see that we as an industry have done a lot of good innovative programs within the bounds of what we understand FDA guidance to be. And I also don't think that there have been a lot of um, warning letters written um, that have been related to violations that are specific to social media. Certainly we've seen letters written that have talked about how we have violated some of the advertising guidelines um, within social media, um, but they haven't been something that's unique and specific to social media in and of itself. And so I think that for a while to come, we as an industry um, can continue to be innovative within boundaries, of course, in meeting the needs of our customers and of our businesses um, through the use of social media as an extension of um, the work that we've been doing traditionally in our marketing uh, with goals of meeting um, objectives of awareness, education, and helping patients with compliance and adherence. It won't be as much as we'd like to do, but I think it'll be enough that we can continue um, to add significant benefit to the healthcare ecosystem um, until we hear more from our regulatory authorities. And finally, what do you see as the real critical success factors when it comes to executing social media campaigns within healthcare in the right way? Yeah, so when you pose the question of what I think uh, the critical success factors are in the execution of any form of social media program, there are really three things that come to mind for me. One is that I think that amid all of the hype and buzz about social media, that we need to be careful that we're not executing social media programs just because they're a cool thing to do, but that we're making sure that whatever we execute is aligned, like all the other programs that we're doing in, in the traditional channels, against what the business and the brand's objectives are as well as what the needs of the customer are. And I certainly um, believe that the more that we can leverage our work within social media on, on particularly hot issues um, within our marketing plans, um, the better um, we're going to feel about those investments in a scenario where they're not always easy to measure. But again, I think that if we set them up so that they're making uh, the same contribution to the metrics dashboard that other investments we're making within a given brand strategy are making, um, that even that will ease our ability to measure. The, the, the second critical success factor um, that I've had a lot of personal experience with is really respecting the long runway um, ahead of execution that one has to pay attention to in terms of aligning with what I call our risk management stakeholders. So that's going to be medical, legal, regulatory, um, and compliance. Um, we spend a lot of time here at Novo Nordisk engaging very productively and proactively with our various partners and stakeholders in these risk management departments. And early engagement um, and ongoing engagement and briefings and, and even having them in the planning process has really been instrumental to the success that we've had and how we've used social media um, here. And then the third thing I would say is that I think that 
we much too much underestimate learning as part of the ROI equation when we're executing in such a new space as social media. And so for that reason, I think that maintaining a student's posture in everything that we do and looking particularly early on at all the learnings that we might gain that will accelerate our execution use and benefiting from this channel as we move into the future um, is something that is a critical success factor and that we need to continually keep in mind um, as we progress. Craig, thanks very much for your time and insights. It's been great speaking with you. Well, Paul, this has been a great discussion. Thank you for inviting me to it. I've really enjoyed um, the planning for this and the contribution that I've been able to make. Um, frankly, a number of the questions that you asked caused me to have to go back and give some thought to some things, and thus I found um, this a beneficial process from the standpoint that it's jogged my own memory and um, forced me to think more deeply about some things that maybe in the rush of getting my work done I've neglected recently, and I'm looking forward to it benefiting my work ongoing also. Take care and talk to you soon. Bye-bye.